Alright guys and welcome to the second part of my tutorial or guide to building your gaming PC. Last episode we covered why you would actually want to build a gaming PC and some of the reasons behind it also pros and cons of buying pre-built systems compared to building your own system. Now this episode we're actually going to cover the CPU. Now the CPU if you don't know is the main core of the computer. Now when I'm referring to CPU I'm not referring to the actual tower I'm referring to the chip inside that plugs onto the motherboard. It's generally kind of flat and square and there are a lot of different varieties, a lot of different versions, architectures, clock speeds and we're going to cover all that material in this episode. So you're probably wondering what's important about the CPU. Well, the CPU and motherboard are kind of bought together. In other words, you don't go pick your CPU and then pick your motherboard. You kind of you pick what you want or what system you want to base your computer on and then you sort of build from there. It's kind of hard to explain. For example, you make certain like baseline points first and then you pick what else you want or what other features you're looking for. Now obviously budget comes into mind and cost of parts. So the first and main CPU term we want to cover is the clock speed. This is generally measured in gigahertz. For example, my processor is a Phenon 6, an AMD chip in the Phenon range obviously and has 6 cores and runs at 2.8 GHz. Now the majority of chips nowadays come stock between 3.3 and 3.5 GHz in and around that area. Some chips are lower, some chips are higher. Now there's another thing we're going to cover way down the line when it comes to actually configuring the computer after the building process called overclocking but it's most important that we mention it here. With a home build system, you can overclock your computer. Now what this means is actually make the computer run faster. Gigahertz is the measure of speed for the computer. So the higher the gigahertz, the faster your CPU. Also, the CPU is the single most important part of the computer when it comes to speed. The C upgrading your CPU will upgrade your computer's speed to no end. People claim that you upgrade your RAM you get a faster computer. That's true in certain situations, but the CPU is what you upgrade if you want a faster computer. Overclocking, however, means you can get a faster CPU without having to spend any extra money. Now, overclocking comes with advantages and disadvantages, but you will have to spend extra money on coolers. Now, all computers or all CPUs come with what's called a heatsink. This is a type of, basically it's a block of metal that sits on top of your CPU with a fan attached to it. Now it also has fins and fans on it to help push air through and increase the surface area. So the bigger the cooler, the more fins and the more air, the better the cooling. So this is to draw heat off your CPU because if you didn't have this, your CPU would essentially just overheat within seconds and your computer would shut down. Now the CPU has uh, safeties built in so that if it does detect an overheat, there are thermal sensors in there, it'll automatically shut the computer down and prevent any further damage. This is obviously important if you're overclocking because if you make the computer run faster or make its gigahertz run faster, it means that you're speeding it up and the more you speed it up, the more heat it generates. It also needs more power. Now we'll get into that when it comes to motherboards, but if you want to overclock, you need high quality components. Now my CPU has been overclocked from 2.8 gigahertz to 3.8. Now that is a massive overclock, but I bought the Phenon 6 knowing well that it would overclock well. It's, if you want to overclock, it's more advanced. I would not recommend overclocking for a first time builder, but it is something worth looking into if you want to upgrade your computer down the line. Now you've probably heard me say or this term called gigahertz a few times. As I said, it's a measure of speed and what it actually means is how many cycles your processor can do per second. In other words, it's how many calculations it can do in a second. In other words, it's a measure of how fast the transistors can actually switch from the on state to the off state and do its binary addition and subtraction. Now, the gigahertz is manipulatable through the BIOS of the motherboard. That's the overclocking thing. We'll get into that. Trust me on that. Now, another thing you're probably wondering about, what does dual quad, trip, hex and octa-core mean? Well, that's how many processors are in the CPU. 
Essentially, your computer has one processor, the standard computer has, that's your Pentium processors from years ago. Nowadays, all modern computers have two or more cores. What this means is it can take two signals in simultaneously and output two signals at the same time. Now, in order to use this properly, the application or the program you're running has to run in multiple cores. Now, when it comes to gaming, only recently four cores has come into it. But the multi-core technology also allows you to run multiple programs at the same time without slowing them down. Don't forget, you cannot use the cores as one big CPU, but as small CPUs that can run in parallel with each other or together. In other words, if I have a 3.3 GHz computer, which is a quad core, that means each core can run at 3.3 GHz. But unless the application you're using, such as a video rendering tool like Premiere Pro, which is what I use, will actually use all the cores and work in parallel. While some applications, such as WinZip, only use one core, which means your other three are sitting idle. This comes into handy for games because only very modern games like Battlefield 3 actually use more than two cores. I think Battlefield 3 can use four. And I think it can use six under, if, if you have the processor, it'll use six to help spread out the load and give you better performance overall. Now, another term that pops up is something called the threads. In other words, the threads is the inputs or the data lines into the actual CPU. For example, if you have a 64-bit CPU with six threads like mine, that means you have six threads which can accept 64-bit binary digits in. Now, you don't need to know much about this, but the threads are essentially the input into each core. Now, the new Intel processors, such as the Sandy Bridge and the i7 range in particular, have a thing called hyper-threading. This means that they actually put in two threads or two inputs per core. This allows them to squeeze every last ounce and drop of performance out of the CPU to maximize your performance. This is a very good thing and I wish AMD CPUs had it personally. Okay, so now we've got our most of our CPU terms explained, we're actually going to move into the picking of your CPU. And the first thing you have to do is make the choice between Intel or AMD. Now, this is sort of a computer hardware war that's going on, per se, much like the console wars. Essentially, the Intel CPUs tend to be very good. They have massive performance, okay? but they are more pricey. The AMD CPUs tend to give you the most amount of bang for the money you spend, but they just can't match the performance of the Intel CPUs. So the first we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the AMD range of CPUs. Now, when it comes to AMD, you have a very simplistic choice because with Intel, you tend to have each range of CPUs has their own socket and are not compatible with each other. However, AMD, for their last uh, four generations of CPUs, I'd say, have been using the same sort of line of sockets. And then the next one up is backwards compatible with all the rest. So with AMD, they are all based on what's called the AM3 Plus, is what I would recommend as your socket choice. Now this will be coming around to motherboards, but if you have AM3 Plus socket, that will support AM3, AM2 Plus, and AM2 sockets as well. Now when it comes to the processors, there's the Athlon, Phenon 2s and Bulldozer range. Now, the Bulldozers are a bit of a waste. They're the only 8-core bull processors currently available, but their individual performance, in other words, the amount of performance in each core, if you want to run a single threaded application like WinZip, which we mentioned earlier, means that it just falls flat in that area. However, if you tend to be running a lot of shit, and once you tend to be like, rendering, recording and gaming simultaneously, well then it might be worth looking into an 8-core system for multi-threading and very, very heavy multitasking, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend it. In the AMD range, which are tend to be the budget range, the main gaming CPU is the Phenon 2 X6s. These range from the 1055T models to the 1090T models which range from about 125 euros up to about 165 euros range, which is, for the performance you're getting, is incredible. I use a Phenon 6 1055T and I've overclocked it to be the fastest of any of them. And 
it can do everything I want it to do. I can record 1080p 60, no bother. It's amazing for what you're doing. Now, if you want to go even cheaper, you can have a look at the Phenon 4s, which are the quad core models, or you can have a look at the Athlon range. My first processor actually was an Athlon X4, which is the four core Athlon, I think it was the 640, which is the three gigahertz model. And it performed well, you know what I mean? It, it was a solid processor, it cost me about 100 quid. At the time, now it's worth about 70, so quad core is very accessible. I don't recommend going dual core, to be quite honest. With desktops nowadays, quad core is what you want. Now, when it comes to Intel, their latest range is called the Sandy Bridge Extremes. They came out literally two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think. They're too expensive, they're in the area of seven to hundred to a thousand euros we're not going to be looking at them we're going to be looking at the sandy bridge range of processors which are the core i5 and i7 respectively now there are a couple of different models um they're all based on the lga 1155 socket is for the sandy bridge motherboards now the main two you want to look at are the 200 euro 2500k now a Sandy Bridge processor is determined by it being like i5 or i3 or i7 and it's going to be 2XXX. So 2500 follows that. Now the K, I'm not sure what that means, but I do know, I think, I think it means the overclockable version. I, I don't know. But the 2500K is what you want. It's about 200 quid. Now if you have the money to spend, get the 2600K. The 2600K is like the golden egg of processors at the moment. It was a complete masterpiece by Intel. It will do everything. They're only quad core, but this shit performs better than the eight core bulldozer that AMD is currently touting. It is amazing. If you have the money for the 300 euro Core i7, just buy it. It is ridiculously amazing. Just do it. Now, the previous generation, of course, would be the Core i7 950 or 920 or 8, I think 780. There's a bunch of different models. Don't even bother with the old technologies, guys. Like the 10, the LGA 1366 and the LGA 1156 for those models. Don't even bother with them, to be quite honest. Just buy yourself a Sandy Bridge. You know what I mean? They're lower value, they're better performance are just better overall in every single area so guys that's what you want from intel you want your 2500k or your 2600k if you've got the money if you want to go mad you can get a sandy bridge extreme which are under the names 3xxx and use the 2011 chipset or socket i mean which means it's actually 2011 pins which is kind of crazy but if in doubt just get a 2600k or 2500k Go with your LGA1155 technology. For cheaper processors with great performance still, get a Phenon X6. Uh, preferably the 1075 or 1090T models because they have unlocked multipliers which comes into play in overclocking quite a lot when we get down to that. The next ones down will be a Phenon 4 Black Edition. Uh, the X4 models, they're quad cores, they're great as well, they perform well. And if you really, really, really have to save your money, go with an Athlon. It'll still perform your grades great. Games great, I can't even speak. But get a 640 or higher, a 3 gigahertz or higher quad core of Athlons and you're set. So that's sort of my advice on buying your processor. And that's what I'd recommend to buy. Um, so now we've covered the basics of CPUs and most of the terms touted around by different manufacturers. There are a lot of other fancy terms they use, but to be quite honest, they're the main ones you really need to know before buying your processor. So anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the second episode discussing the CPU. And as always, it's been good talk and I'll see you out there.